Mr. President, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, on Friday, Ted Wheeler, the mayor of Portland, sent a letter to you saying, basically, we don't want your help. You make matters worse. Saturday, one of your supporters is murdered uh, in Portland uh, by, it looks like, a, a suspected Antifa uh, individual. And then on Sunday, Wheeler comes out and Biden and essentially tries to blame shift to you for the violence there. Uh, your reaction? Well, these are terrible and very incompetent people. Portland's been burning for many years. For decades, it's been burning, but now it's gotten to a point they don't want to do. I watched the mayor try and get in with these people, and he went to a protest, and he went in there. They almost killed him. If he didn't have security with him, he had five security guards, he would have been dead, just like they would have done to Rand Paul, who's a great guy, and his wife, Kelly. Uh, it is a disgrace when you look at what's happening. Now, we sent in Homeland Security. The reason we sent them in was to protect our courthouse. We have a $300 million courthouse, and they wanted to blow up our courthouse or burn it down. Uh, take your choice. Blow it up or burn it down, they said. And I said, no, no, that's not happening. So they wouldn't protect it because the mayor said he doesn't care. So we sent in our Homeland people. They did a great job. Immediately, Homeland Security. Immediately, it was protected. And that's the only reason they were there. I've offered to send in the National Guard. I've offered to send in anybody they want. I could put that out in 45 minutes, and it would stop. And I think the people of Portland and the people of Oregon, I know it's a liberal state, considered liberal. They're tired of it. They're tired of having, uh, of living with this curse. They're living with a curse. They say that when you walk through the streets of Portland, this is years and years of burning and it's, well, it's so not the last 90 days. It's been really no, no. Chaos. It's been horrible in the last Protests. 90 days. But no, it's been going on for many. It's been going on for many, many years. It's like you're in. I, I won't name the city, but it's a city someplace in the world that's not so good. Okay, it's a terrible situation. The Oregon governor said no one is safe in Donald Trump's America. Yeah. They're trying to turn the yeah, tables yeah, no, on you trying. after months of they're not really saying much about the violence. Right, but they won't ever criticize anybody that really, you know, that that's a violent person, frankly, that's violent. They stick up for the violence. They don't, the people that are getting hurt, they don't care about. They don't care about these people. It's a weird thing. It's like warped minds. And for the last 93 days, I've been offering to send, and as you know, they have to take the offer. They have to make, they have to ask to have help. I've been standing and I've been saying, anytime you're ready, we'll put it What's out. What's motivating them, Mr. President? I think it's a sickness, actually. I think there also, there's a fear. I watched uh, the way they treated this Mayor Wheeler when he was standing there. And I'll tell you how unfair the news is. NBC News didn't show that he was being shouted at and cursed at. And he ran, and literally, he had to run for his life because they were going to really hurt him. He had security. If he didn't, he would have probably. Well, they showed up as an apartment building over the No, weekend. no, how he can still stick up for him. I think there's a fear. I think he's afraid. Are they afraid that Oregon could be in play because of people's concern about law and order? It, it could, Is that what you're saying? It could. I don't know. I don't no. know. I think that, like the mayor, Wheeler, I think he's probably afraid for his life because if you would have seen him. Mm -hmm. But I'll show you how dishonest NBC News put on, and they didn't have the people shouting. They had him standing there, and they talked about how it was a show of great unity, the mayor standing with the people. Those people were going to kill him. They were saying things that I can't repeat right now, but horrible things, but they didn't put that on. I actually happened to see the real tape on Fox. He escaped with his life, and yet he doesn't want any help. It's so unfair to the people of Oregon. We could solve that problem quickly, like I did in Kenosha. You know, Kenosha went through three or four days of... They, you wouldn't have a Kenosha right now. We demanded that they send in the National Guard, call the governor. And in all fairness, the governor did it. Not enough, but it was enough to put it out. And we ultimately put in more. We had a 1,000 people, well, and we put it out quickly. You wouldn't have Kenosha right now. Um, in Pittsburgh today, uh, Joe Biden uh, gave a speech and he spoke directly about this violence. He may believe mouthing the words law and order makes him strong, but his failure to call on his own supporters to stop acting as an armed militia in this country shows how weak he is. Your response to the vice president, sir? Look, he's a weak person. He's been weak all his life, but now he's really weak. Uh, 
he shouldn't be running for president. He should not be there. But do you want your supporters to confront the no, left-wing protesters, no. or do you want to leave it to law enforcement? No, I law don't want them. I want to leave it to law enforcement. But my supporters are wonderful, hardworking, tremendous people. And they turn on their television set, and they look at a Portland, or they look at a Kenosha before I got involved and stopped it. Or they look at Chicago, where 78 people were shot last week, and then numerous people died. Uh, or they look at New York, where violence is up by, like, what, 150 percent. It's up by a number that nobody — and people are leaving. They're looking at all of this, and they can't believe it. They can't believe it, whether it's my supporter them, or not. But you don't want them showing no, up to I try don't. to — No, I don't. Well, it's a peaceful protest. I mean, they were right. protesting. They weren't — you know, it's amazing. They want to protest, and they get criticized. The other people run through the streets, burn down storefronts, hurt people, beat people, and kill people, kick people in the face. That would have happened to Rand Paul, by the way, and his wife, except that you had two and then ultimately four very good policemen who took a big beating. They took a big beating. And they really saved Rand Paul. In fact, we're going to bring him into the White House and give him some kind of an accommodation, because they really — they really — what they did was very brave, actually. I mean, can you imagine? I'm saying policemen were brave because they're escorting. But they're escorting a U.S. senator and his wife. And as Rand said, he would have been killed if they weren't there. It's Isn't it true also, thing. Mr. President, that the Democrats have been, in their own way, inciting this violence oh, sure, against inciting. individuals for as almost as long as you've been in office? Sure. If you see anybody from that cabinet, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome. Anywhere. Please get up in the face of some Congress people. There needs to be unrest in the streets. The domestic enemies to our voting system and wow. our honoring our Constitution uh, are right at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue with their allies in the Congress of the United States. It's not only the Democrats, it's the media, the fake news. The news is so fake. Like I told you with the mayor, where they make him look like it's a great unity thing, when actually they were cursing at him and they would have done big numbers on him, but they don't show that. They just show the mayor standing with these very tough thugs, and uh, he was gone, okay? They saved him. But NBC shows it like it's unity with the people. I don't get it. I don't know why they're doing it. And I say, I will say this, at some point, I will not be president. Uh, Hopefully, that'll be in five years from now. But I will not be president. And they're going to die. They're all going to die. Can you imagine if they had a cover? Sleepy Joe Biden. It won't be very much fun. But much more importantly, our country would go to hell. Our stock markets will crash, as sure as you're sitting there. We will have problems like you've never had. But if you take Kenosha, mm -hmm. and if you take other parts of the country that I don't even talk about, I could show you things that we've done to stop this kind of a thing that's happening in Portland and happening in Chicago and happening in other places. Most red states are cooperating with federal Almost law enforcement, all. and Almost. things are relatively calm in, in red state America. But Biden said again today in Pittsburgh uh, that, essentially, you, you're not going to be safe in Donald Trump's yeah. America. So. Uh, if it weren't Donald Trump's America to just use the expression as I'm president, uh, you would have riots like you've never seen. The, the Democrats have lost control of the radical left. And if you look at Bernie and the, I call it the manifesto that was agreed to with Biden and his group, that's further left than Bernie ever was. They won't be able to control these people. These people have lost, they have lost control of these people. And it's hurting them, don't forget, Biden wasn't going to come out of his basement until the election. You, you now he had to because the polls are so good so for me. Now he had to because the polls are different. So all of a sudden he's in Pittsburgh. He wasn't going to leave his basement. Then he said, OK, he's leaving, but he won't leave for 10 days. 10 days is a long time. So in the meantime, like on Sunday and so or Saturday, I'm in Texas, I'm in Louisiana. I was going to stop in two other places. Fortunately, they didn't get hit. Arkansas wasn't hit very much, et cetera, et cetera. I would have stopped. But I'm all over the place. I leave early in the morning. I get home late at night. And that's what you have to do as president. And, and tomorrow, Joe doesn't have energy. Tomorrow, you're going to Kenosha, Wisconsin, yeah. of course, the, the, the scene of so much unrest uh, lately. Uh, and the governor says he doesn't want you to come. Why is it important 
for you to be seen by the people of Wisconsin now? Because I am a tremendous fan of law enforcement, and I want to thank the law enforcement. They've done a good job. And when the governor says that I shouldn't come or he'd prefer that I not come, I'm the one that called him and said, Tony, you got to bring out the National Guard. Well, I don't really want to do it. Tony, you got to bring it out. And unlike your governor of Oregon that just keeps saying no, he agreed to it at least. Now, he agreed to a small number, but the small number was plenty. But isn't it a political motivation? They don't want you to come to blue state America because they don't want the media to have to cover what's really happening oh, on that's the ground. True. Isn't this oh, political? That's true. If you look at what's going on in blue, as you call it, blue state America, blue city America, you look at what's going on in New York, you look at what's going on in these states. Chicago is a disaster. Portland, you look at Portland. Now, Portland's a little diff different. That's anarchists, and that's. I actually think in many ways that's easier to handle. I think Portland is very easy to handle because that's a group of anarchists that are paid by the outside. And, you know, we put a lot of people in jail. I don't know if you know this or not. Remember uh, three, four months ago, we were having a problem with monuments. They were ripping down statues and monuments all Democrats over the place. didn't say anything about that. No, the they? Democrats had no control. It actually got out of control even for them. I signed in an executive order, 10 years in jail, if you knock down a statue or a monument. You haven't heard one thing about it. You haven't. We wouldn't have. They were going after Thomas Jefferson. They were going after Lincoln. And they were going after the Washington Monument if they could knock that one down. They were going after everything. And I actually don't even think they know. I think they're just thugs. I, I don't think it's, it's, it may be an ideology and it may not. It is an ideology for the people that are paying them. And the funny thing is, and the strange thing is, the people that are paying them and all this money, because somebody's doing what it. What about they, the corporations? They travel. Well, wait. The people paying them, those people will be overthrown. Their lives will be taken away. Their lives will be endangered. They're all going to be gone. They're just stupid, foolish people that made a lot of money. But Corporations have given an enormous amount of money and the tens of millions or maybe hundreds of millions to Black Lives because Matter. Because they're weak. Which is all over a lot of these sure. protests. That's so be, what does that mean about because, these corporations? Why are they paying that money out, Mr. Because President? they're weak people, led by weak people in many cases, not all corporations. What does that are. mean? They're weak I looked people. at numbers where one company is giving hundreds of millions of dollars. When you say they're weak, what do you mean? Explain because that. they just do what's the easiest path. That's not the easy path. That's a very dangerous path. Black Lives Matter is a Marxist organization. You remember pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. That was the first time I ever heard of Black Lives Matter. I said, that's a terrible name. It's so discriminatory. It's bad for black people. It's bad for everybody. And all of a sudden, it becomes like sort of, although now, if you look, it's going way down because people are tired of this stuff, what's going on, the Black Lives Matter. If you look at what's going on with the bats and the there are a lot of thugs. A Running lot of through D.C. last night. Oh, it's terrible what's going on. But Black Lives Matter came into existence walking down the street screaming, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. And that was about police officers. That was representing police. Mm -hmm. They were pigs, pigs in a blanket, like the sausages or hot dogs. Like well, bacon. they were saying worse over the last couple of days in Oh, I think even worse, yeah, yeah probably. No, it's, it's if you can, I don't know, do you get worse? But, how, but, but DOJ's role in, in trying to really hit the law enforcement uh, accelerator here against these groups, a lot of the individuals coming into Wisconsin have been tracked as out-of-staters, yeah, the ones who've been arrested. We have them all. Can, can DOJ do more, and what could they do to really start putting the fear of God in these violent, not the peaceful protesters, but violent protesters? So they have under investigation a lot. In fact, I'll show you. I just had this because of this very important interview with you. But I just, uh, and I'll give this to you, in Kansas City, violence has decreased by a third since the initiative began. In Indianapolis, 49 guns confiscated. More than 1,000 arrests have been made under the initiative. Uh, DOJ is addressing violence and crime across the country. FBI, but you don't read that. The FBI and ATF are assisting the Portland Police Department. But you can't do much when you have absolutely no cooperation. But if they don't think they're going to go to jail for 10 years for yeah. doing what they're doing, then they're going to keep well, doing it. So how does a well, Trump reelection calm things down in the United States? Biden says he's going to calm things down. How will a Trump reelection calm? Things calm? Down. Why? Why won't he calm things down? Biden won't calm things down. They will take over. They will have won. If Biden gets in, they will have won. He's a weak person. He's controlled like a puppet. So it's not going to be calm things down. It's going to be they will have won. They will have taken over your cities. It's a revolution. You understand that. It's a revolution. And the people of this country will not stand for that. 
They're not going to stand for that. The vast majority of people feel like me. They feel like — every time I put law and order up on social media, it gets such an incredibly positive response. The people of this country will not stand for it. If you say calm things down, yeah, calm things down because they will have taken over. Take a look at what's going on. And Biden — well, Biden is — I don't even like to mention Biden because he's not controlling anything. Who, who do you they think is pulling him. Biden's strings? Uh, is it former Obama people officials? People that you've never heard of, people that are in the dark shadows, people that oh, — What are, does that mean? That sounds like conspiracy theory, dark shadows. No, what is people that people that you haven't heard of. They're, they're people that are on the streets. They're people that are controlling the streets. We had somebody get on a plane from a certain city this weekend. And in the plane, it was almost completely loaded with — with thugs wearing these dark uniforms, black uniforms, with gear and this and that. They're, they're on a plane. Where is the where is this? I, I'll tell you sometime, but I, I, it's under investigation right now. But they came from a certain city, and this person was coming to the Republican National Convention. And there were, like, seven people on the plane like this person, and then a lot of people were on the mm -hmm. plane to do big damage. They were coming from Planning for, for Washington. Yeah, this was all — this is all happening. But and the money is coming from somewhere. Money is coming when, from — How can it be From some very stupid rich people that have no idea that if their thing ever succeeded, which it won't, they will be thrown to the wolves like you've never seen before. Women voters, uh, so important uh, to reach out to them, whether you're yeah. Republican or Democrat. You have a deficit among women voters now. Well, that's what they said last time, too. Right. Well, let's, let's say, for the sake of argument, you have a deficit among female voters who may be, in some cases, you're too aggressive, you're too, your tone or your tweets. What do you say to them directly about what you'll do in a second term? OK. I have to be aggressive, because I'm, like, standing here in a sea of incompetent people, stupid people and violent people, very violent But that's the people. kind of language, stupid that's people. Okay. That's okay. A lot of women don't it's like also that. The, well, where are we? Oh, we're in the White House, I see. See? <laughs> OK. So, I'm standing here in a sea of people, and we need law and order in this country, and women see that with me. You're never going to have law and order with Biden. Hey, look at Ferguson. Look what happened during that. You know, people forget. Look at all of those horrible race riots you had during Obama. Ferguson's just one that comes to mind, but you had them all the time. Look at all of what happened with Brown and this one and that one. Look at all of the problems you had under Obama, it was a disaster. It was actually worse than anything. This is a much different situation. Uh, again, the anarchists of Portland are different than what's going on in Chicago. Chicago can be solved. I think it's actually a little bit more difficult to solve. I think the anarchists, in many ways, are much more solvable. But for women, more than anything else, they want security. They want safety. They have to have safety. They talk about the suburban woman. What I did recently, I ended the regulation that provided low-income housing that that mandated low-income housing. That was Obama's housing. rule. That was the Obama rule. It was a disaster. Do you think the suburbs are in danger if Biden is elected? Oh, yeah, we because, already know the cities are in okay. danger, but so, are the suburbs in danger? Because they say that's fear-mongering on the part of I know the suburbs. Look, Westchester was ground zero, okay, for what they were trying to do. They were trying to destroy the suburban, beautiful place, the American dream, really. They want low-income housing, and with that comes a lot of other problems, including crime. May not be nice You're not to say, but I'll say. saying poor people are criminals, though. No, I'm not saying that at all. But it does. There is a level of violence that you don't see. So you have this beautiful community in the suburbs, including women, right? Women. They want security. I ended where they build low-income housing project right in the middle of your neighborhood. I ended it. If Biden gets in, he already said it's going to go at a much higher rate than ever before. And you know who's going to be in charge of it? Cory Booker. That's going to be nice, OK? So I think that women are going to want me. Well, for a lot of other reasons, the stock markets will crash. As sure as you're sitting there, your 401ks will go down to a small percentage of what they are. Biden says he's not going to raise taxes on anyone but making he's under $400,000 He's year. going to do $4 trillion in tax increases. He's going to do things that are going to cost so much on the Green New Deal, which is, which is done by a child, OK? That's the mind of a child, because the Green New Deal is ridiculous. It doesn't work. 
They're going to do things under the Green. You know, the Green New Deal, if you actually did it, is $100 trillion. That's more money than this country could make this in a thousand years. This is going to be good-paying jobs. All the great-paying yeah, jobs paying that Obama jobs. apparently didn't yeah. create. Let's rip down a building and build a new one with no windows, OK? Uh, the African-American community, you've made more strides in outreach to African-American voters than I think of any Republican president yeah. in my lifetime. What can you tell the African-American community tonight about your commitment to doing more in the second term, and what will that include? So I've done criminal justice reform. I saved the historically black colleges and universities. What they went through is for years, including the Obama. Funding. Uh, prison reform, criminal justice reform. Next term. Opportunity zone, uh, more of the same. And in fact, I actually said in the speech, uh, the best is yet to come. And I've been treated very well, at least in the polls, I hope, you know, I hope that translates because unfortunately, the African American, the black community has been so used to going and oppressing a Democrat lever. And what have they got out of it? They've got nothing. Obama didn't give them criminal justice reform. I did. Obama didn't give them opportunity zones. I did. Obama didn't do all of the things, didn't say Obama could have saved the historically black colleges and universities. He didn't do anything for them. He didn't do anything for them. I've done more. And I said in the speech, some people said you shouldn't say it. It's too aggressive. I said, what's aggressive? I've done more than any president in the, in the history of our country, except for maybe able. And I say maybe. Maybe Abraham Lincoln. The reason I say maybe is I'll explain that to you later, OK? All right. The, I want to talk but about... But wait a minute. I've yeah. done more for the black community than any president in the United States, with the exception of Abraham Lincoln. And it's true. Criminal justice reform was such a big deal. And look what Biden did in 1994. What he did to people, to black people. Called the, he called the, the criminals predators. Well, he called them predators. Super predators, super predators, yeah. predators actually. Yeah. He called them uh, super so predators. So when you, when you see the unrest on the streets, and so much of it is, is driven by an antipathy toward law enforcement, yeah. and you know, more African-Americans are stopped by the police, the statistics that are cited over and over again, what can you say to those families who, who live on those streets and who are worried? They're worried because they think their sons or even yeah. their daughters could be targeted. Because I know, because I've known you for a long time, you don't want that. You want people to all be treated equally, but they have a caricature of Republican voters, and you're the leader of the party. What do you say to them about that mischaracterization? What the black community wants in this country is they want police, and they want law and order. They don't want what's happening to their communities. They're being affected in a much harsher, meaner manner than anybody else. That includes Hispanics, where I'm doing very well also. Look, they want law and order. They want the police. You know, they do polls, and the, the polls are at 82, 83 percent. They want the police. They've gotten along with the police, and the police have been very badly mistreated, because you have one bad apple, and it becomes a story for weeks. St. Louis African-American police officer shot in the head oh, and yeah, killed Dorn. last night. Hey, He's now another uh, uh, oh, African-American yes. just killed yeah. yesterday. That's true. Yeah. Just That's true. Killed. It's more dangerous to be a police officer today, do you not think, than it has been in the police a long time? are under siege because of things. It, they can do 10,000 great acts, which is what they do, and one bad apple, or a choker. You know, a choker. They choke. Uh, shooting you mean the they, guy, they, they, they shooting the guy in the back many times. I mean, couldn't you have done something different? Couldn't you have wrestled? You know, I mean, in the meantime, he might have been going for a weapon. And, you know, there's a whole big thing there. But they choke. Just like in a golf tournament, they miss a three-foot You're putt. not comparing it to golf, because, of course, that's no, what the media I'm saying say. people yeah. choke. People, people, people panic. choke. Yeah. And people are bad people. You have both. You have some bad people, and you have, they choke. You could be a police officer for 15 years, and all of a sudden, you're confronted. You've got a quarter of a second to make a decision. If you don't make the decision, and you're wrong, you're dead. People choke under those circumstances, and they make a bad decision. I've seen bad decisions of people that it looked bad, but probably it was a choke. But you also have bad police. But you also, the vast, not, not only the vast majority, thousands and thousands of great acts and mm -hmm. one bad one, and you make the evening news for weeks. I know you reached out to Jacob Blake's mom, and she, she 
said on camera she was sorry she missed the call. She, she you know, respects yeah. the office of the presidency, and she would, I think, think she would like to talk yeah. to you. Have you have you tried to talk to her again, and would you talk to her again? Uh, the call is being made, as I understand it. Yes. Fantastic.